What's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy right here in the dirty, dirty. Y'all forgive me, man. My hair is like air all over the place. But it's like 22 degrees outside. They say it's feeling like 9 degrees. We done had a little snow in. I, you know, so I'm basically just grinding, trying to stay warm. But in the process, what I did want to do is uh, I'm sitting here working on the uh, El Patron 357 Law Dog Holster Rig. Um, actually, the first one that I've ever done um, fully detailed like this. You know, uh, holster rigs. I mean, uh, and, and here's the thing about it. You hear a lot of different crafters call things a lot of different things. Now, um, a rig to me is the whole entire setup just like the law dog is or the law dog holster is you know when i when i hear rig i hear not only just the holster but i'm talking about the belt the bandolero whatever the case may be we are talking about the whole entire setup that's what i think when i hear rig uh just a regular holster whether it's a a uh uh, IWB or OWB, which is inside waistband, or outside waistband, shoulder holster. I would even think a shoulder holster would be more classified as a rig because you still have to do the whole entire shoulder harness. But anyway, um, I've made holsters before, um, small compact holsters, you know, Glock 9, 38. 38 is, is, is one of my favorites because that's what I like to carry. Uh, but... Um, but uh, um, this is my first law dog rig. So, but um, in making this, I really wanted to get to the point of showing you guys about it, it's burnishing. And I, I think I've done a video about this before, but I have some new um, uh, dye that I'm working with, which is supposed to be an all-in-one type of thing. and But I'm actually doing a completely different technique um, with burnishing this one. Uh, I, I think I've showed you guys before the uh, my, my, my new burnishing set, my new edge slicker set. Um, these three little jewels right here. Um, these three little jewels right here are very very handy and was very very inexpensive uh if you guys are not on the wish app i encourage you to get on the wish app because for these three little jewels right here i paid two dollars and that's real wood i don't know if you guys can hear that but that's wood so if you if you have a hang up about China or whatever about ship getting products from overseas. I mean, me personally, I would tell you to get over that real quick because just to buy this little piece here, oh God, you guys can tell that it's late at night. I'm sorry about that. Um, but just to buy this little jewel right here is way more than two two dollars, and that's just for one, just for one, not including this one or the the dial slicker you know hey two dollars for all three on wish but anyway um what i want to show you guys is this um i've already taken my dye and i'm going to dye this mahogany you know the customer re requested that he wanted he, he wanted the rig in mahogany so what we're doing what i'm doing i'm just taking the the, the leather itself and I'm daubing the dye right around the edges of this now yes traditionally I would just take regular water and and use and and just go and burnish and slick this before I apply the dye but I really want to see how this is going to turn out and that's one thing that you can't be afraid to do in leather crafting is don't be afraid to try new things. 
you know, there uh, because it just might turn out awesome. So I really want to see how this is going to slick with, and basically what I'm doing, I'm just taking uh, my edge slicker and I'm just slicking the sides of this. Oh God, I got to go to bed. But, you know, money never sleeps. So, you know, I'll sleep when I, when I'm dead, like my daddy used to say. And just taking that edge. Oh, man, that is beautiful right there. That almost looks like it has a touch of wax in it. Wow. Can you guys see that? Can you see that shine on there? Oh, man. I wish you guys can really appreciate that. Now, look. This is the other side. Dull. No shine. You can see that shine? Like this one? See that shine? Now, yeah, you can see it in the light. Let me get my light over here. You might can see it better. You see that shine on there, that slickness? Now, I'm going to do this other side, which is kind of dull. So, I want to make sure that this is not an accident. Oh, wow. And this is why I tell you, tell you guys, you know, don't be afraid to try something new. That is wonderful. And actually, it saved me a step because I didn't use water. I just went directly ahead and used the, the dye itself. And just my regular edge slicker and some good old elbow grease. Good old elbow grease. But you guys look at that. Pow. That's that's the business right there. Let me let me get my, my, my camera, maybe my light out of my so you guys can see that. Man, can you see that? That that's that's what's happening. That is, let me see if we can get a better. You see how how crisp and clean that slickness is? And man, that's smooth right there. And that's the other side. It's the side I just done. See how smooth that is? Don't be afraid to try new things. You know, now I wouldn't suggest you try this on a piece that's for a customer. Um I would tell you to try on some sample pieces first or some scrap remnants pieces and just test it and see. Just use just, just the dye itself. Now, now I'm curious to know if antiquing will do this same thing. Well, I um and let me tell you something, guys. I spent good money on this burnishing wax. And in two different colors. They only come in black and brown. So, but this company, uh, Tandy don't doesn't even carry this anymore. You have to order this straight from the company. Which it has a wax base in it already. And, but this brown does absolutely nothing for a piece that the customer wants to be burgundy. You know, so now the black might have trimmed up good. But I didn't want that black to take away from the the actual color of it. So I wanted to make the whole entire thing burgundy. But man, I'm liking the way that that's turning out. I don't even think I need to hit the this with the beeswax. That's the great, that's the most beautiful part about this. I don't even think I need to hit the beeswax on this. And yes, I do use beeswax, and I make my own, actually. You guys can see beeswax. And it's, it's actually, uh, even if you want to get off into beeswax, and I'm going to plug this in real quick, because it, it doesn't need a whole video to show you guys how to make beeswax. You can actually go to Hobby Lobby, and they'll have the bags of beeswax. So you guys don't think that I'm lying to you. You can buy the bags of beeswax at Hobby Lobby and melt this down. And um, you can use as much of the, and these come in little pellets. 
so you can use as much as you want to to make as big of a block as you want and you can actually buy the little candle containers they're like little tin or metal containers and once it melts you can pour it right now the great part about beeswax is you can actually melt this in the microwave these little pellets in the microwave and they'll turn out great but it's cheaper to make your own beeswax than it is to sit up and go and buy beeswax for $5.99 when you can go and buy a bag of your beeswax pellets at Hobby Lobby for $2.99 and melt that down and it doesn't take a high flame or anything like that just melt them in there and when it's kind of like uh, um, uh, like play-doh texture you know it's not really liquid and it's not uh, you don't want to go too solid or well, it would have never melt but five minutes in the microwave and you just let it cool down naturally and you pop it right out of the little uh, wax container now I don't no, no, now listen to me put this in right quick don't put the metal in the microwave don't do that <laughs> but uh uh, you can even buy the, the, the little, uh, you'll know what them guys want to talk about when you get the Hobby Lobby. Buy your little thing of uh, beeswax for two ninety nine, and then you can buy just one little candle. You can even buy the little glass candle holder and just pour it right into there, let it get cold, and boop, hit the back of it and pop it right on out. But anyway, you guys, I just wanted you guys to see this, the burnishing. Man, I mean, look at that. That is beautiful. And I really like this. So I need to really go back and hit the other side so it can have that gloss shine just like this. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit more work on this. But hey, thank you guys for chilling with me these 12 minutes. But I really wanted you to know about, about burnishing. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the Law Dog rig. Get this thing uh, completely dyed out and set up overnight so I can go ahead and start buffing it real good and come back with some uh, um, some some tan coat. Uh, I might even not even do tan coat. I might I, I just got some other stuff in here too that I'm dying to try. Um, I've never been a fan of this leather balm, but this stuff was on sale at the Tandy in my area, and they was getting rid of it. I think they was getting rid of it. So uh, I want to try this and see it. And it says it's a neutral color, so it's, it can be applied to anything, any Phoebans dye. And you just uh, uh, sparingly put it on with a soft cloth and then buff it out. And it's supposed to make it have that nice waxy uh, look. And I think it will make this holster rig uh, look real good. But uh, just to give you guys a quick glimpse, this is the Law Dog right here. Finished it up today. All we have, all I have left to do is to stitch it and uh, put the put the um, the um, retainer holster or the band on there like such. And this baby is ready to go to its new home. So, uh, but hey, you guys stick around for the final pictures. But hey, this is Robert the Leather Cowboy down here, Premier Leather Crafters, burning the midnight oil, getting it in real late. So hey. See you guys on the other side. Keep grinding. Grind it till you find it.